We're facing a crisis of displacement right now. If you go back to 2004, there's about 19.5 million displaced people and refugees. That's tripled. So you now have around 60 million. It's like a country. We wrote a recent report called Heat, Light and Power for Refugees, Saving Lives, Reducing Costs. To really change the way that energy is delivered in situations of human displacement. Our estimates show that of those in camps, only 11% actually have access to kind of modern forms of lighting. The average length of time spent as a refugee is, is actually 17 years. There are many camps many around the world that have yeah. become effectively towns. These camps are in countries with uh, wonderful solar resources. Innovative companies could be brought in to provide these kind of solutions. For instance, solar home systems to be monitored from afar, which makes sense for a lot of these refugee camps which are in very remote areas. Private sector actors, non-traditional humanitarian actors can, can get involved. They'd actually procure for a service. The company has more long-term accountability. They'd be providing electricity over a number of years pilot projects fail because no one is there to maintain them and to really bring them into the local economy. So if you invest in renewable technologies that help refugees and host communities, so that there's something that exists for those host communities at the time when refugees are no longer there. There's a slightly different energy challenge going on with the migration in Europe. There has been a market for this sort of stuff which could easily maybe be dismantled and moved on and used yeah. again and that's something that definitely needs more work, how to find the mobile solutions. We are a small company based in Berlin. We're in the social impact industry. We produce this small solar powered lamp so you can put the big sun into the solar panel and that gives you an evening's worth of light, either 10 hours of a lower level or four hours of bright light, making energy something that you can actually harness yourself. There are 1.1 billion people in the world without access to energy. Some of these people are in rural Ethiopia, for example, and that's where we actually began. And I was a um, kid studying next to kerosene lanterns. Our little son Charge, which is uh, also a lamp, you know, it has a phone charging slot here at the side, USB, and it has four times the solar panel power, so it's just massive energy. We know in the refugee movements in the world right now how important mobile phones are, and the fact that wherever you go, you can put this out in the sun, and you can actually stay connected with the world. We believe charity will have trouble in delivering a scalable solution. We try to understand how we can create something which really offers all of the, the people we work with the opportunity to make change in their communities and through business to, to drive a scaled delivery of these units by having a vendor in a local community. It is us collaborating with people to make these units available. And this is our kind of positive energy symbol, like the wedge to open the energy discussion. There is a lot of international attention on energy access. Every country in the world is meant to come up with a plan for putting this into place. And we want to make sure that displaced people and refugees are on that agenda.